In this video, we're gonna talk about attracting developers to the XRPL via smart contracts. Move over, Codius. There's a new sheriff in town. Also, we're gonna talk about believing in XRP because apparently Jed McCaleb of Stellar does not. Let's go. And now, the XRP Minute with Chip on the chain. Chip here with the XRP Minute. Let's dive into the shallow end head first. So Ripple's partner Flair is preparing to launch smart contracts on XRP. This is a nice little primer we have here. And if we look back to a tweet that David Schwartz had commented on not too long ago, he said if he wasn't working full time at Ripple, he would devote more time to Codius project. Now, as you know, Codius is an open source project uh, and they also have smart contracts. Now, what I like about what Flair is doing here. Um, if you know anything about smart contracts, basically they're like contracts you would normally write on paper. However, they're, they don't have an enforcer or an arbitrator. Um, they contain certain digital, certain um, terms that are agreed upon. And then once those are satisfied, it becomes irreversible. So this is really, really important for, for, the, uh, for the network itself. So they opened up a test net, which is like a, a sandbox to be able to basically test and look at applications um, before at risk and actual value. And if you know about anything about any new project that's launched dealing with crypto, it's always like, hey, when they do a beta test, there's always going to be bugs. They always say don't put a large amount of XRP or crypto on it because, you know, something could go awry and it might not turn out exactly the way you think. Now, in this case, they're letting you test the network and the smart contracts without any value, which is going to be a huge thing. Um, one of the things that I really like what this is doing, so their native token will be an algorithmic stable coin created in part by burning XRP and payments for a contract that can be make, made and received in XRP via the interledger, and it will be integrated with Flare. Now, this is huge because if you look at some of the great platforms out there, let's look at Ethereum, for example. It's a great smart contract platform, and it's nice. Instead of being hodgepodge or ad hoc and having peace over there, it can all be done in one place. That's going to be extremely, extremely attractive for devs looking to create a smart contract. And I love the fact that these guys just um, were funded in November, and they're already talking about releasing beta and coming out with their product very soon. They're working very quickly. And also, they'll use an XRP address and an encryption system that will provide XRP users with a, basically a seamless way of interacting with smart contracts. This is absolutely big and huge. Um, if you know anybody that's looking to create smart contracts, again, a one-stop shop. Now, I want to get to this other story here because it turns out that um, Ripple CEO and co-founder do not believe in XRP. That's a kind of a misstatement because what they say about Brad Garlinghouse what they're really alluding to here is Jed McCaleb talking about it. If you believe in the in the crypto, you hold it, right? They're, what they're alleging here is that Brad Garlinghouse doesn't believe in XRP because Ripple sells XRP. A completely mindless, uh, nutty story that's written by someone who obviously doesn't have an understanding of how it works. Not a problem. So what they get into here is Jed McCaleb. Uh, formerly, obviously, you know, of Montgox. He, he was one of the founding team members of Ripple. He stayed with the company for a very short period of time where he left to go found what? Stellar. And it's the, their token is called, um, it's called a, uh, you know, it's the XLM. And if you think about he doesn't believe in it, well, that's weird. If he doesn't believe in it, then why did he go ahead and just basically bridge off on his own? based on everything you know that that you have with ripple now ripple was institutional he said he wanted to go off and he wanted to be more retail he wanted to be more consumer based and that was kind of the and that was something that ripple said no no we're going to be institution we're not going to go that way they had a disagreement he parted ways i'm sort of paraphrasing this in a, in a sense but if you know that he receives xrp every single month that he's basically selling so on may 1st uh, Jed got roughly about 55 million XRP from Ripple, which is equal to about $11 million. And what they're asserting here is that he's been selling it off. Well, of course he's been selling it off. They're like, well, if you really do you believe in Ripple and XRP, well, no. Well, isn't that the expected answer? He's building his own project. Why would he leave a company and say, no, I believe in them? You know, back in the day, you had Adidas and Puma brothers. They split. 
One founded Adidas, the other one founded Puma. You don't leave the other company and say, do you still believe in the other company? No, of course you don't believe in the other company. The thing you want to realize here is that he has to, he's selling it off. Do you think he's selling it off? Probably, but does it matter? He's put all his eggs in one basket. This is Stellar Lumens, right? He's got his Stellar and his Lumens, and he's betting it all on his project. And would you expect nothing less from someone who spun up their own group? I'm not saying he wouldn't, you know, hodl long term, but this doesn't make any sense. So this whole article is baseless. It's kind of crazy. Um, I'm not even going to get into this, address this, because this is just insane. We already kind of talked about that. I want to go into this because Stellar wants to be the chosen platform for the digital dollar. Let's ask ourselves a question. The digital dollar, will it be decentralized? Uh, probably not. How about the Chinese yuan? Is that decentralized? No, it's not decentralized. It's centralized, controlled by the government, controlled by a central bank. Now, let's take a look at this in another way. Let's look at the digital dollar. The digital dollar is going to be, is it going to be decentralized? Probably not. It's going to be centralized because it's going to be controlled by a central bank. They want their, their mitts and paws all over it. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm saying what is a digital dollar? Now, if a digital dollar is blockchain based and it's a central, it's a CDBC, right? Then and only then might we see a possibility. But a digital dollar, I've got digits in my bank account. I go to a machine, I press a few buttons, and boom, out converts it to fiat. Because if there was a run on the banks, there's not enough fiat to cover it. It's all digital. This is just a play, in my, in my opinion. Um, so let's look at this. Stellar wants to become the global payment standard in the next five years. Five years? Five. One, two, three, four, five. And admitting it won't happen anytime soon. Huh. The Stellar Foundation wants governments to issue CBDCs on the network. Again, if they're going to be centralized, probably not going to happen, right? It doesn't mean it couldn't happen. It doesn't mean Stellar couldn't be the chosen one. But I don't see why they would go to Stellar. Now, we've heard about the partnerships. There's a lot of great people building on um, the Stellar. You don't hear as much about it. Now, we always heard about IBM. Now, IBM, let's take IBM, for example. So Jed was asked recently... If IBM had purchased um, Lumens, you know, XLM from him directly from, from Stellar, and he said no. Now, wait a minute. Hold up. Are you telling me that IBM chose to go at retail market? They didn't buy directly from Stellar? That seems weird to me. Seems like a little tip-off right there. And then if we look at this here, so jump past this chart right here. CBDCs was exactly the type of digital money Stellar was designed for. Ha, huh, that's weird. I thought it wasn't designed to be that. I thought I thought Ripple had the vision of what XRP was designed for. Now, is this more akin to XRP or XLM? Well, this is getting kind of weird. Now we're at one size fits all, right? So Stellar was designed for connecting real world financial infrastructure with digital blockchain world. When asked what this normally might bring for Stellar, he said it would likely create a huge opportunity with blockchain becoming the arbiter of innovation. Now, that statement I agree with 100%. Um, you know, comparing it to Libra and these other things, and these other layers, um, it certainly makes a lot of sense. I necessarily don't necessarily believe that this is what we're going to see uh, coming up. I do think, though, that if you're going to make a choice, if you want to go ahead and you're, uh, you want to issue CBDCs and you want to partner with somebody, the natural fit, in my opinion, is going to be Ripple. They've been building. They've been expanding partnerships. They've been doing this for a long time. I think that Jed's original vision for what he wanted to do with Stellar is a little bit different, but now you can't necessarily turn it into one size fits all. If you enjoy the channel, like, subscribe, click that little bell, and you will get uh, updates from here. Also, check it out. You also can check out our other channel. It's over there on another sort of YouTube weird little place. It's YouTube, but you can check us out. We do all kinds of live streams and everything over there. That's my take. What's yours? Chip out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.